Magneto has his own asteroid. What could possibly go wrong? Hello and welcome to a Smurfy video. And today we are looking at the Uncanny X-Men, the Fatal Attractions Omnibus. So here is the cover, a nice shot of the X-Men. Gently turn it to the side. Doesn't say Marvel Omnibus on the side. Fatal Attractions, I don't know why. Kind of bugs me, it should be an Omnibus, right? Maybe I just don't know what an Omnibus should be. So there is a bio on the 30th anniversary, Magneto returns with his Akotis. And they are ready to start a war, basically. And it collects Uncanny X-Men 298305. The 315 always bugged me. For some reason, this should be in the Phalanx Cav Covenant um, hardback. But it's not, so it was always a bizarre one. The annual 17, the crossover with X Factor 87 to 92, X Men Unlimited 1 to 2, X Force 25, X Men 25, Wolverine 75, and Excalibur 71. And underneath the dust cover, this is the kind of bio. And over this side, we have the usual, the creators. Peter David is one of my favorite writers. John Romita Jr. is a great artist. Got Joe in there as now, well. Now, this review is for Josh Long, um, who requested me to do this video on Fatal Attractions Omnibus. Um, I hope you enjoy the video, mate. So here is the underneath dust cover, a simple blue X, which is, um, that feels a bit disappointing compared to some of the covers we've seen over the years. And then the blue on the side, and then Fatal Attractions at the bottom, and well, nothing at the back. Okay, so underneath, <laughs> oh goodness, right. Um, it's always like this at the beginning of the book. There's the writers, the pencilers, the inkers. Fair attractions and all the other good people that worked on this book and then pretty much it's straight into it with the uncanny x-men 298 so we're just kind of i'll try and run through it basically so the occultes the occult oh my goodness the occultes that work for magneto are kind of going out there and wrecking havoc and pretty much Magneto has his whole Asteroid M and it's Sam Mutants welcome. Let's go live outside the world, so to speak. Yeah. Turn page turn. There we go. Right in Stimpy. Stimpy. Well, Stimpy. Good 90s store uh, 90s cartoon. Oh my goodness, I'm just talking gibberish. So this is the f bit about X Factor. I love a bit of random. Very, very cool. Um, and I think in here we get... I'm hoping we get the funeral of Ileana, who, um, who sadly passed away, and that obviously leads to Colossus going off with Magneto. So we're still on X Factor. That's quite a bit of that X Factor. Hey, look at that Wolf Spain. That's pretty cool. Very, very cool. So yeah, there's a big, big chunk of X Factor at the beginning. Here we go. So we start with the Uncanny X Men 300. So big milestone. Now, it's been a long time since I actually read this omnibus. A good few years. I think this came around 2012? Maybe 2013? Uh, around that sort of time it came out. 
So I'm um, actually I've recently just um I've started actually um collating the actual individual comics. Um it's something that I've I've set myself as a goal. It's something that I've always wanted to do, but I always said no. And with good reason, if you start getting into some of the issues, it depends on what kind of grade you want. Me, I'm I'm I can't be super picky it's not like i'm super loaded and i can afford to spend 200 quid on an individual issue but i would like to get them in a reasonable condition so it's okay if that makes sense uh fitzroy hey i love this issue so uh storm colossus and um Professor X, um, their system crashes because of Sienna Blaze. And I think there's some sort of weird game going on with the Hellfire Clubs, uh, Shinobi Shaw and Matsu. Um, I think that's right. I, I could be just talking crap here. Um, but um, this was probably one of the first kind of annuals that I read. Or well, not annuals, this is X Men Unlimited. But it was one of the first first sort of stories that I sort of read other than the Mer Island um, saga so pretty much this is all building up to the big crossover which is Fatal Attractions hey Kitty Pride oh yeah so this is um, that that pretty sad moment so Ileana so Jubilee got reattached to Eliana and obviously Kitty Pride was her best friend when she was a teenager. Obviously she reverted back, and um, you know this cuff, it's kind of, of heart wrenching stuff, you know. Yeah, and so begins federal attraction. So here they are. Their war on humanity begins. Magneto is making his big play. So you got Exodus. As well, you got some sentinels thrown in there. I can't remember why they're there. Damn. So mobile man gets stabbed in the eyes. That's gruesome, man. I think he dies shortly after as well, if I remember correctly, from um, the legacy virus. But I don't think it's Jamie Prime. Um, yeah, it gets kind of confusing when it comes to mobile man. But um, Jamie Maddox from his investigation days was one of my favorite. Um, we also see very soon, um, I'm not sure if, I, I'm hoping I don't skip over it. But um, so Magneto starts his, one of his attacks on the X-Force team. It will get pretty brutally brutal. And that leads us to Professor X -X Xavier. Taking a hard lock, look, look at himself, and um, clearly, you know, we knew that Professor Xavier, especially when we get to Onslaught, that he was um, looking at ways to subdue his team, as well as, um, I guess, his many villains, Magneto being one of them. You know, it was one of those things, what if it came to it, and I had to make that cool. So, that's a beautiful, beautiful artwork I'm not going to pretend to, to remember who the artist for each um, story is because to be quite frank I'm not that talented um, near mint collector he's a, a top guy who's um, he'll be able to tell you who, who, who does this picture and that picture etc um, he's um, very well averse with you know, Kenny X-Men and this is where Magni sorry Colossus turns on um, he's back on the x-men you know through all his pain he can no longer stomach it so magneto actually makes the kind of first move here and he says anyone who wants to come with him come with him and it's one of those moments that colossus is the person that decides to go with him So, yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah, he um, takes Bishop out um, at that point in time. 
Then they have a little battle, and then, well, Magneto goes. Uh, next, we're back with X-Men Unlimited. I'm not going to pretend to know what this... I think it's an in-between kind of... It feels like a kind of uh, story around Magneto, or folks in Magneto. Got Gabrielle Haller there. And then I think it's Exodus reaching out to other teams with a bit of a past twist. Uh, past twist. Oh, goodness. Um, I'm going to stop talking about that bit. And uh, I remember Moira had... Um, it was believed that Moira interfered with Magneto as well. Hence why he, he went on. I think the first um, kind of um, attack in... I think it was like within the first few episodes, issues of the new X-Men series, which started in the 90s. So pretty much Magneto is making it impossible for humans to deal with at all. So Professor Xavier takes a team. It's not a big team as well. It's actually quite a, quite a small team. Um, one thing I'd say about this, you know, I love this omnibus, I like the story, but it doesn't always feel like it just flows together all the time. So. See his team there, a bit closer there. And let's just go for it. Um, I, I understand Rogue. Quicksilver, Wolverine, Jean Grey, um, Gambit. Mm, I'm not so sure that he was would have been the choice that I would have. I would have maybe I'm a bit biased here. I would have picked Cyclops, knowing that he had fought Magneto. But um, I can't remember if Professor Xavier says to him actually, "Stay behind. We're the first wave. If it goes wrong, I need you." So Magneto, this is the bit that Fatal Attractions leads to. So he's already given Cable candid his, his ass, should we say. I um, don't usually say words like that in a video, but I'm going to today. Then Magneto takes it a step too far with this crunching, agonizing pain um, to Logan Wolverine, one of, you know, Everybody loved Wolverine at this point. He, you know, I, you know, he was one of my favorite characters at this point. I suspect, um, probably not so much these days or over the last five years. Even when he was dead, they still gave us Old Man Logan, which, you know, kind of wound me up. And it's too far. It's too far. Professor Xavier does something that he's done some bad crap in his life, but this for Professor Xavier. He's had enough. He pretty much wipes Magneto's mind completely. So, theoretically, we actually lose two major characters out of this. So, Magneto ends up a uh, drooling mess on the floor. And, well, Wolverine's just been ripped to pieces. Uh, throughout the omnibus, we get the, the extra covers, etc. that they show us, which is always pretty awesome. Uh, so pretty much Jean Grey telekinetically has to keep Wolverine together throughout it. So um, I think this whole issue is probably like some sort of death dream or mind dream. Where Professor Xavier and Jean are obviously trying to keep him alive. You know, that, that much pain he had never experienced before. And I guess it overloaded his healing factor completely. And they do end up coming in quite hot into the atmosphere, as you can imagine, coming from space. So it's quite a quite a dark time for the X-Men. You know, we're getting these little dreamscapes. Which is it's got some really really nice art in this actual. Wolverine story and we end up learning that underneath his um, adamantium skin he did have bone claws which I think actually get broken off at some point 
during this whole reign. Um, and Wolverine kind of devolves um, into a kind of animal. And then we get an Excalibur issue. Um, so it's pretty like a recovery issue, I guess. At the end, there's Colossus in his new um, Occultese uniform. I'd love to see a figure with this. That'd be pretty awesome. We'll get a nice little, I guess, scene with these two, which doesn't happen very often. Very often at all, so it's kind of nice. And Kitty Pride, whose heart's probably broken at this point. So quite a lot of tragedy all at once. Colossus, Iliana, Wolverine, even Magneto. Charles Xavier's lost his, I guess, his best friend, you would say. So I think there's, um, I guess there's a little attack from the occultes. There he is. Okay, I think 315's in here because it kind of has a, a, a tale around Avalon, around Colossus, Exodus, who's kind of taken on the mantle. And then you've got, um, obviously, Magneto as well. Well, he's not really there at the moment because, well, you can see. He's just there, drooling mess. Um, so... <laughs> You, I, I can understand why it's in here, but I would have preferred it to be where it belongs in the chronological order of where it belongs within the X-Men omnibuses or the hardbacks. That's just me personally. And at the back, we get a little about, bit about the X-Men the holograms that were um, put on the comics, which um pretty cool. Um, <laughs> okay. And then we just get some cover art, as you could expect. There we go, cover art, cover art. Hey, I love that. That looks pretty cool. Oh, and here are some Fleer Ultra cards around the same sort of time. Okay, there you have it. So there's the Uncanny X-Men Federal Attractions Omnibus. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. Smurd P is my page. And I'm on Twitter. Not sure what I'm doing, but I'm um, check that out as well. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care. Goodbye. Embrace the geekiness. <laughs>